and welcome to day one of Mug of Research. So Mug of Research aims to make academic research easy to consume for practitioners. And um, what I'm asking you to do is go and find your favourite mug, make yourselves a cuppa, and then take a breather from your day-to-day -day work to really um, learn about uh, some current academic research and why it might be important to you. Now, um, day one of uh, Mug of Research is all about why is the third sector Welsh Government partnership important? And I'm going to be really focusing in on what the strengths are of the partnership and also making some recommendations for its future direction. Now, if you're not sure what the nature of the partnership is, then go back and watch the introduction video, which really explains both the purpose of Mug of Research as a series of videos and, uh, and also explains the nature of the partnership itself. But... Um, one of the things that is probably important to emphasise is that the significance of this partnership, because actually the partnership is built into legislation and it was really recognised at the, at the point that that was introduced that this was really creating a new form of politics. It was described as an inclusive governance that was, um, that was really seen as groundbreaking in terms of the way that the third sector might be engaging with um, the devolved government. Now it's over 20 years on since that was first introduced and, and this partnership is still of interest because of the way that it's written that partnership within the legislation which has given it this extraordinary durability and it's an opportunity for us to consider what the implications of that are. Today I'm going to be really focusing in on um, the strengths of the partnership. Now in doing that I don't want to suggest that actually that there aren't some weaknesses within the partnership um, there are, and I'm going to be touching in on some of those weaknesses and what could be done to overcome them in some of the subsequent videos. But first, I really want to focus in on the strengths because we have this tendency within Wales to be a little bit critical of what, uh, what of this existing partnership and not really taking a step back and recognising its importance and significance. So it seemed like an important note to start on. And on that note, one of my um, key findings that I want to share with you first is quite how much this partnership is valued. It is recognised, um, both from Welsh Government itself, but also from the key policy actors from the third sector that I interviewed, that actually that it is really valued and it has a symbolic value. And that symbolic value is seen as just as important as the, any practical value that it might have. In fact, it was well recognised by Welsh Government officials, by um, the third sector itself, that actually we're really fortunate to have such a structure here in Wales and I compared the um, experience that policy actors have in the other UK nations to what we have here in Wales in terms of the ability for the third sector to have direct contact with Welsh Government ministers. So um, that's one extraordinary positive point about the partnership. A second one, and, and a really significant aspect of my research findings, was actually the significance of informal relationships. Now, I should probably contrast those with the formal um, ways that the third sector really engaged with the partnership. Formally, the third sector attended these whole series of meetings directly with the TSPC itself and also the ministerial meetings. And in order to do that, they participated in some pre-planning meetings, usually two pre-planning meetings, in which the third sector um, pretty much took a lead on, to, uh, on setting what the agenda of the partnership would be. And together, the third sector would work up a series of papers that they would then present at these formal meetings. So that was the formal practices that the third sector were using to try and engage in policy making. However, there was a whole range of um, informal practices that the third sector were also ad adopting in order to try and influence and steer the policy making practices. Now, I'm not going to go into the great detail of how those different practices were. I think that might need to be a separate video, which you should look out for from Mug of Research. But, um, but I think what's important to recognise is that actually these informal practices were acknowledged and accepted. And they were acknowledged and accepted both by the third sector itself, by WCVA and by Welsh Government. So um, this is really significant because some people have previously, um, both within theory and within practice, criticised this notion that you might have informal relationships between um, the third sector and Welsh Government, that somehow that might compromise democracy in a, in a, to a certain extent. But actually what we see here is that those informal practices were acknowledged and accepted and um, and so it was seen to really provide an opportunity for the third sector to influence 
And in fact, one of the things that I found was that there was a whole series of pieces of advice that were given about how to develop these informal relationships between the Welsh Government and the third sector and how you can sustain those um, relationships over time. So in, in that video that talks about how to achieve um, policy influencing practices and the lessons that have been learned by the third sector here in Wales, um, I'll include how to develop and maintain those informal relationships as well. But now let's move on to consider um, one of the weaknesses of my particular study. So one of the things that I was doing was really focusing in on the partnership itself. And this turned out to be a weakness. However, I decided to turn that weakness around into a strength. So um, a limitation of my study was um, I was focusing in on the practices that were used within the partnership. But actually, when I was interviewing the policy actors themselves to ask them what they were using to influence policy, um, it was quite clear that they understood influencing policy and being a much broader level, not just within the partnership itself, but within many different um, policy influencing venues across Welsh Government part and, and the Senate itself. So what I decided to do was really look at some of their answers and map out all of those different places, all of those different policy influencing venues that they use. And I'm sharing that with you here in this diagram. So what you can see here um, on the one side is the partnership that I've previously described with the Third Sector Partnership Council, the ministerial meetings and, uh, and the 25 thematic networks. And in fact, two little subcommittees have formed in relationship to that partnership. One's managed by WCBA and it's seen as the um, Third Sector Partnership Working Group. And then there's also um, a separate subcommittee that's managed by a Welsh government called the Funding and Compliance Subcommittee. So that sums up the partnership itself. But actually, the third sector unit are also responsible for a, a separate infrastructure partnership called the Third Sector Support Wales, which really seeks to support the third sector across Wales. And beyond um, the particular relationship that we have there with the third sector unit within Welsh Government, there are significant other relationships that, um, that we could see developing. For example, we can see there that actually the Equalities um, Division has a significant relationship with a number of those Equalities organisations. That um, relates back to their funded programme, it re relates back to the Strategic Equality Plans Board that exists, um, there is also a whole series of equalities forums that exist that, um, that different equalities organisations engage with the ministers directly. And in fact, we've got this fantastic um, uh, subcommittee called BEIGE, which refers to the Budget Advisory Group on Equalities. So all of the equalities organisations were engaging with the equalities um, division as well as the third sector unit. But actually, the third sector organisations were engaging with other departments as well. There were, there were a whole series of direct meetings that exist between ministers and certain um, third sector organisations. And those direct meetings might exist on a regular basis or um, it was seen as being particularly available to the third sector to, to set up a direct meeting with ministers and that was seen as appropriate. Um, in addition to that, there's a whole series of other funded programmes that relate to the different departments within Welsh Government. And so the third sector would engage with those funded programmes and have a chance to to really influence the direction of those funded programmes through engaging with it. In addition to that, there's this an enormous array of consultations that take place um, that really consult on Welsh Government policies before they're implemented, and so the third sector could engage in those consultations as well. And extraordinarily, I think one of the most significant ways that is it, um, this influence takes place is with this whole range of um, working groups, ministerial advisory groups, there's a whole group, group a range of stakeholder groups and task and finish groups that um, the third sector really engage. So you can see that the involvement of the third sector within Welsh Government stretches way beyond the partnership. And it's not just with Welsh Government itself. There's, if we move from the executive over to the legislative, um, actually we have the um, what was called the National Assembly for Wales, and now is referred to as Senedd Cymru, um, and that is um, a real opportunity for the third sector to engage with the whole range of committees that exist within the Senedd. Um, and in fact, the Senedd organises a whole range of events as well. So they can really f introduce ideas of how policy should be influenced in many different settings, in many different ways. And that's really seen as a way of kind of chipping away um, to achieve policy influence. And it's important to have these multiple positions and to keep that continuous message um, of reaching Welsh Government from various different directions as an effective tool for achieving policy influence. 
I'm going to take just a second to say here that it's not that any one organisation was occupying all of these positions. I mean, what organisation could have the resources to do that? The point here is that they could choose strategically as to which of these venues to um, seek to exert policy influence. One of the real significance about this is, is to then consider, well, where does the partnership really, um, how is that useful in this kind of broader picture? And it's useful in two different ways. On the one hand, it's very useful because once you're um, a member of the partnership itself, if you're a representative organisation, then actually that provides you with significant opportunities to um, canvas for access to other positions. And in fact, some organisations talked about the way that they would be plucked from um, the Third Sector Partnership Council and brought into some of those other working groups or ministerial advisory groups. So it gives them a great opportunity to position themselves within Welsh Government on a wider level. The other thing is that it enabled the third sector to maintain its relationship with Welsh Government, whilst at the same time able to um, take a role where they were critical of Welsh Government. So why is that important? Well, actually, there's some real significance about this idea that actually if the third sector have too close a relationship with Welsh Government, perhaps they won't be able to be independent of Welsh of government and they might not be able to be critical of government but what I saw was actually the third sector were able to maintain a degree of independence and to be critical because they were had their feet in several different positions at any one time so it was possible for them to achieve this kind of critical role whilst also maintaining close relationships and they'd use this insider position to inform um, ministers of uh, their intention to be critical of Welsh government at a later stage so that Welsh government could prepare itself and consider how it might adapt and and mobilize so there's a real opportunity for um, the third sector to maintain a degree of independence and a critical voice whilst um, whilst sustaining their um, relationship with the Welsh government okay so I'd like to make five recommendations that tie in with the findings that I've been sharing with you and those recommendations are on my wall here they are particularly for Welsh government in fact Recommendation number one is um, I would recommend celebrating the achievement of having this partnership in place for over 20 years and to um, really recognise that you've that the partnership itself has laid the foundations for a broader way of working that's been adopted across Welsh Government and devol devolved government in Wales more generally. So um, I would... Uh, really celebrate that achievement. Now one way you could do that is with, potentially with the renaming of the partnership because it doesn't currently have one name that captures the entirety of the partnership. Um, recommendation number two is Welsh Government, I recommend you do an audit of the uh, many different relationships that exist and the many different ways that Welsh Government engage with the third sector, not just through the partnership, but through all of the different departments within Welsh Government. I would use this as an opportunity to reframe um, this as a broader achievement of the partnership itself between Welsh Government and the third sector. Recommendation number three is I would um, suggest that actually you could use this uh, in order to promote transparency. What you really need to achieve is a quality of opportunity for third sector organisations to participate in these many different ways across Welsh Government. So if you were clear about the systems to, for example, engage third sector within the different ministerial advisory groups or within the different task and finish groups that you set up, then this would be a real step towards a quality of opportunity for the third sector. Recommendation number four is um, I would recognise actually having the third sector in these multiple positions across Welsh Government and devolved government, um, more generally with the Senate, is really evidence of, the, of Welsh Government succeeding in having a close relationship with the third sector whilst maintaining the third sector's ability to be independent of Welsh Government and even be critical of Welsh Government. So, um, so I think that's something to celebrate and recognise. Now, um, I would say that the third sector, uh, uh, more generally across the UK and internationally, might want to turn to look at this um, partnership as a great example of a formal relationship between government and the third sector. And I think it's actually a great example of um, equalities third sector organisations having a close relationship with government. But my fifth recommendation is that I would really seek to resist any discourses that might imply that an informal relationship between equalities organisations and, and government 
um, representatives, whether officials or um, politicians, actually isn't, isn't some form of undue influence. In fact, it's inevitable and it's actually an important part of redressing the power imbalances that might exist for a particular equalities groups to really be able to influence policy. In fact, it's really evidence of a healthy pluralist government. So that's the end of day one of uh, Mug of Research. I hope it's been useful. I look forward to seeing you again in day two. Thanks very much. Thank you.